Hi everybody, Dr. Daniel, and today the title of my talk is regarding the subject of does oxygen work for cluster headache? So cluster headache is clearly the worst and most severe headache type known to man. Affected individuals have described it like a nail, like a needle, like a rod, like a hook in my eye. It's terrible pain. It's found in 0.3% of the population. And uh, the problem with treatment is probably the best drug for treating just one cluster headache is injectable subcutaneous sumatriptan, uh, which works in 10 minutes. Um, you can also use nasal spray zolmatriptan. Uh, they work quickly and uh, well. Oral drugs don't work because they're not intense enough to get into the brain. They take 30 minutes to get into the brain to work and a cluster headache may be over by then. Also, none of the tryptans have been approved by the FDA for treating cluster headache. And um, the limits on tryptans are you can only take two a day, like two shots of sumatriptan, and you're not supposed to use more than 10 shots a month. So you can easily see that's not a good thing to do. Cluster headache attacks, when they come on, episodically may last six to eight months in which there may be one to eight headaches a day, and parasympathetic 10% of patients have chronic cluster headaches daily. So you easily see there needs to be another drug for treatment of acute therapy treatment for cluster headaches. And that drug has been found to be oxygen. So does oxygen work for cluster headache? Oxygen treatment delivered at the onset of a headache via a, what's called a rebreather mask is very effective acute therapy of migraine. And I'm sorry for cluster headache. Oxygen therapy works quickly, usually in five to 15 minutes. Well, what are the side effects of that? Oxygen therapy is safe and has no important side effects. Well, the speed of the onset of a cluster headache versus a migraine, let's talk about that a minute. Cluster headaches are much quicker. They come on without warning, they reach a peak in two to 15 minutes, whereas a typical migraine without our attack may take 30 minutes to an hour to come on. In that situation, oral drugs might work, but not for a cluster. How about safety? High flow oxygen is a safe, highly effective treatment for cluster headache. For those who need treatment, oxygen is economical, devoid of worry about developing medication over his headache, which I discussed earlier, can happen with the tryptans and has no important side effects and no long-term iatrogenic medical problems with it. Administration oxygen is given via a non-breather mask, which lets oxygen in but doesn't let it out. And this allows a buildup of carbon dioxide. Oxygen treatment is usually effective in 10 minutes. Wow. And has no risk of cardiovascular symptoms, which is on the hit list for all the tryptans. And cluster headaches also typically are smoker. They're smoking cigarettes, man, all the time, which add to the adds to the atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease risk from using tryptans. The flow rate of oxygen, the effective use of oxygen for cluster is at a, a rate between five and 15 liters per minute, and much higher than typical oxygen given to patients for pulmonary or cardiac kind of problems or treatment. The use of a nasal cannula, which goes in the nose like this, doesn't really work. It doesn't give high enough concentration of oxygen, so you have to use this non-breather mask. And the prescription the doctor writes should be for the following things. A non-breather mask, a regulator, it's kind of like on a scuba tank. It has a little thing there that registers how much oxygen is in there. It determines oxygen flow, and an oxygen tank, which usually has a wheeled cart so you can move it around. The tank can be refilled every month or is needed. The mask or regulators need to be added to the refill price or bought separately. Okay, related questions about this. How does oxygen work for treating cluster headaches? Well, the pathophysiology of how oxygen works for cluster headache is really not well understood, but it may have something to do with the fact that oxygen decreases uh, the arterial flow in the brain and it causes cerebrovascular arterial constriction. Those may be factors for treatment. What is the success of oxygen treatment? Oxygen is safe, economical treatment for personal cluster headache, and is free from any other medical problems, long-term long, or ho long 
long-term harm. One of the problems with using Alex, the main one is doctors don't know how to write prescription properly. Oftentimes the doctors are right oxygen be delivered via a nasal cannula, and that doesn't give a high enough level. The other problem is the insurance coverage is very poor. It only about 65% of all medical insurances in America will cover it, and Medicare and Medicaid do not provide any coverage. Some people have thought, I'll buy uh, non-medical oxygen, which is impure and it has impurities in it that can be sucked into your lung, and that's not a good option. All right, what treatments for cluster headache have been endorsed by the authorities? Answer this question resides in, the art, resides in the article, Treatment of Cluster Headache, the American Headache Society Evidence-Based Guidelines, published in Headache in the year 2016. So that article talked about cluster headache being a common, what they now call a trigeminal autonomic cephalgia. It's the term the International Classification of Headache had given this problem, which is an extremely debilitating primary headache disorder that's usually not optimally treated. Um, in this review, they're going to praise the evidence for acute and prophylactic treatment of cluster headache. And they had an update from the 2010 American Academy of Neurology systematic review. So what they did is they searched the Medline, PubMed, and Embase databases searched for double-blind, randomized control studies, and investigated treatments of cluster headache in adults. So the results were for acute treatment, sumatriptan subcutaneous, zolmotriptan nasal spray, and high-flow oxygen remain the treatments with, little, with level A recommendation. Um, other newly evaluated treatments are, can be listed on that web page and on that article. The FDA has not recommended treatments to be used for cluster headaches, and without FDA indication, then no, no insurance is going to pick them up. So have clinical trials for oxygen treatment for cluster headache been done? Cohen et al. writing on high flow oxygen for treatment of cluster headache, a randomized trial in the JAMA in 2009, they looked at 57 patients with episodic cluster headache and 19 with chronic cluster headache. So 90% of persons who have cluster headache have it episodically, and usually it comes like six to eight months a year, uh, out of the year, six to eight weeks out of the year, I'm sorry. And 10% of persons will have chronic cluster headache, and they just have it daily and almost all the time. This uh, report said that Cluster headache patients who inhaled high-flow oxygen therapy at the onset of symptoms were more likely to be pain-free after 15 minutes than patients who took a placebo. Then, there's an article by Peterson in Cephalgia in 2014 on oxygen treatment of cluster headache a review. And they stated their aim was to review the existing literature to document oxygen's therapeutic effect on cluster headache. So, PubMed search found uh, 28 hits from these. The references were found in total. They had 11 relevant studies they were going to use for this article. They included six studies that investigated the efficacy of the oxygen treatment. Uh, their conclusion was oxygen therapy can be administered at different flow rates. And these studies investigate the effect of low flow oxygen at six to seven liters per minute and found a positive response in 56% 75% and 82% of patients. One study investigated the high flow oxygen, which was 12 liters per minute, and they found efficacy in 78% of attacks. The effect of hyperbaric oxygen has been investigated in a few small studies, but there's evidence only for acute, but not for prophylactic treatment there. Despite the fact that a few high quality studies are available, oxygen treatment is closer to an ideal treatment because it's effective and safe. However, sufferers of cluster headaches don't always have access to oxygen because of logistic and financial concerns. All right, are there any useful websites for cluster headache? There's one called clusterbusters.org. It's a good one. It has news, drug trials, research articles, and patient resources on cluster headaches would be helpful 
to any infected patient or his family. The other one is from AshleyHaddle.com, and she has a, a book she wrote on cluster headache also. This is an incredibly detailed website for what she calls treating cluster heads. I really don't like that. That's fun. She has this cluster illness also. And I include a good sampling for her blog and talk about it a lot. I put it on the published article I have on my web page because it just seems so helpful. Nothing like somebody with an illness to write about it to help you. She's also written a book on cluster entitled Cluster Headaches, A Guide to Surviving One of the Most Painful Conditions Known to Man. So, Ms. Battle writes, how to get and use oxygen to treat your cluster headaches. She says, you know you have cluster headaches. It may have taken months or years, but you finally got an official diagnosis. Hopefully your neurologist or headache specialist already wrote you a prescription for oxygen, but even so, they likely fail to mention it. Not as simple as breathing in air. You need a special mask, a high liter flow, at least one big tank, and several small tanks. One of the best resources for correct oxygen used to abort cluster headaches is found at clusterbusters.org. But an extensive study by Dr. Todd Rosen, who's at the Mayo Clinic, published in Headache 2010, is an eye-opening resource for how difficult it is for patients to get a prescription for the right supplies and how to use it correctly. So there are five aspects to keep in mind as your doctor writes your prescription, and you should take the prescription to an oxygen supply store. And what you need then is the oxygen prescription. Whether it's your neurologist or primary care doctor writing, then they'll likely get it wrong, which will give you yet another hurdle to jump over. Or worse, they may refuse to write a script altogether. Here's what you can do. Direct them to a well-respected resources of information. A 2009 study by Gobes B. et al. found that 78% of patients using inhaled high oxygen content oxygen were able to abort 71 to 85% out of 150 attacks. In comparison, just 20% of patients using room air responded. The study concluded that there's a significant difference between high flow and room air when it comes to treating cluster headaches with oxygen. That's only one study of dozen. The troubling thing is that Medicaid and Medicare, Medicare still don't think there's enough evidence medically to cover it while they don't everybody who's interested in this, as she is, they go to a headache on the hill every year and try to lobby for approval. So I encourage your physicians to dig deeper. Sorry. Into this issue. And if you find a new doctor, make sure he sees the facts. And t if they don't understand, it won't work with you. It's time to move on to another oldest, another headache guy who will know how to treat cluster headaches. All right, item two is the flow rate. The flow rate for your oxygen regulator is another part of the process where you'll face opposition. To avoid this, I suggest buying your own regulators, which can go up to 25 liter per minute or higher. You can buy them on Amazon, she says. When you go through the oxygen company, you may pay a rental fee for the regulators. You don't have to have fight tooth and nail for them to give it to you. Two main regulators you will need are for an E-tank, which is about two feet tall and often seen being wheeled around by hand, and the M-tank, which is about three and a half feet tall and sometimes called a J-tank. Some cluster headache patients use a demand valve that ensures a consistent flow or a bubbler system to help with the dry mouth that sometimes develops. Okay, the next thing, number three, is the oxygen supply company. This is where the metaphorical headache really sets in. Depending on where you live, you either have one choice or several choices. You can ask your neurologist for recommendation or go to www.homeoxygencompanies.com to find the company nearest you. As you weigh your options, compare the prices. Some require a monthly payment. Others, you make a pay for rent for a tank. Remember, your insurance company mostly will not cover the cost of that. So once you pick the company, you'll have to scan or fax a copy of the description in or else bring it in in person. Then you can set up an automatic delivery and so pick them up yourself each time. Keep in mind, you can go through several tanks in a week, 
depending on the number of tags you have, chosen leader flow and the size of the tags. Okay, the next, the mask. Cluster headache mask is available. You can go to clusterheadaches.com has what it's called a cluster headache mask. Now that you have your regulator and tanks, you need to have the right mask. Your, the Arston company probably gave you a nasal cannula, the one that prongs, that wraps around your ears and sits on your nostrils. It won't work. You need a re, non-rebreather mask, which means the mask that may have given you won't work because it has holes on either side of the nose. You can either tape over those holes or buy the mask that's specifically designed for cluster headache patients. And there's a thing called Cluster O2 Kit. It's all written together. Cluster O2 Kit. You can try that. Number five, the tank. I mentioned E-tanks above. They're the oxygen tanks you see people wheeling around with them in the grocery store. If you're using a 15 liter per minute, an E-tank will only last you 35 minutes, which is probably enough for two attacks. These tanks should be saved for when you're away from home and are out. You can keep one at work or in your car. Oxygen Tank Size US, you can go to clusterheadaches.com and they have comments on that. The M tanks, the one you really want, they're hefty and last much longer. All in all, you should have several E tanks on hand for emergency situations and two or more of the M tanks at home so you don't run out during a bad attack of tax bad bout of attacks such as an episodic cycle or a high cycle period of time for chronics. You can choose to get smaller tanks that fit in the backpack, but they will only last one for one attack if that. If the auction company delivers the tanks to you, make sure they show you how to set it up. You'll need a special wrench for the M tank and a separate different wrench for the E tank. So there's a lot of technical details here. That's why reading through her articles is so good. Now you have everything you need. You can start aborting attacks with high flow oxygen. This abortive treatment has little or no side effects. It can be used any number of times a day. It works for approximately 80 to 90% of patients. Some research suggests you can prolong the length of time between attacks by switching to the nasal cannula for 20 minutes after aborting the attacks, in which case you can lower it to five liters per minute. Use the prongs and breathe again normally. You can all do this, also do this 20 minutes before bedtime to possibly prevent a nighttime cluster headache. Cluster headaches uh, generally occur two hours after you go to sleep. The information in this blog is the tip of the iceberg when it comes to cluster headaches and oxygen therapy. There's so much more to know. And if your doctor refused to learn with you, I highly recommend following another one. The road to diagnosis, and unfortunately, is just the first part of the battle. There's a lot of misinformation information about cluster headache. Uh, please scroll, scroll past any article you see on the internet that says natural remedies are cure for cluster headache, which is really impossible. The best information out there can be found at clusterbusters.org and clusterheadaches.com. There are also fantastic Facebook groups called Cluster Headaches with seasonal cluster headaches who could answer your questions based on experience. Learn more about cluster headaches and treatment in her book, and uh, which can be found on Amazon, or you can see it on her website, which is www.ashley, A-S-H-L-E-Y, Hattie, I'm sorry, Hattle, H-A-T-T-L-E dot com. According to the National Headache Foundation, oxygen treatment for headaches was first studied, this is a history of this, in 1939, when Mr. Charles Ryan of Lind Air Products reported to Dr. Francisco Alvarez at the Mayo Clinic that he had successfully treated severe headache patients with pure oxygen. In 1940, Dr. Alvarez released his own study of 100 patients with migrinous headaches. Now, that's an old term for cluster headaches. The actually, epidemiology, the nosology of cluster headache didn't get cleared up until Oh, the late, late 70s or so. Well, these patients were treated with 100% oxygen through a nasal top mask and a flow of 6 to 8 liters per minute, in which 80% of those were reported to be completely or significantly relieved. However, in the 30s and 40s, studies were much less rigorous. And there's nothing to distinguish migraine from cluster headaches. We didn't, the International Classification of Headache didn't start till 1988. Recent work has been done almost exclusively on the effect of 
oxygen inhalation on cluster headaches. Most significantly with Dr. Lee Kudrow, K-U-D-R-O-W, who found that 75% of his cluster headache patients he studied had their pain relieved by inhalation of oxygen with increased success the earlier in an attack if it's used. It's just like migraine with a trip and if you have regular migraine, you want to treat it onset cluster, you treat it onset with oxygen. How is cluster headache classified? And is it related to migraine? Well, when the first American classic of headaches was released in the JAMA in 1962, migraine, uh, it listed migraine as the main classification of headache, and underneath the name migraine were different types of migraine headaches, such as common migraine, classical migraine, hemiplegic migraine, ophthalmoplegic migraine, and at the very bottom, cluster headache. I used to teach this when I started out in neurology. That is, cluster headache was originally listed as a type of migraine, but that was long ago, and now the International Classic Headache Disorder is just first published in 88, and now in ICDH3, it's a couple of years old, classifies cluster headaches separately from migraine in terms of a trigeminal autonomic cephalgia. Here's the current International Classic of Headache Disorder's definition of cluster headache. So you're going to have A, at least five attacks fulfilling B through D. B, the severe unilateral orbital, supraorbital, and or temporal pain lasting 15 to 180 minutes. C, attack is associated at least <clears throat> one of the following signs on the side of the pain. Number one, conjunctival injection, which means eye redness. Number two, which is lacrimation or tearing. Number three, nasal congestion means stopped up nose. Number four, rhinorrhea, which means nasal dripping. Number five, forehead and facial sweating. Six, meiosis or small pupil. Seven, ptosis means upper eyelid drooping. Eight, eyelid edema or eyelid swelling. And then D, frequency for one every other day to eight per day. Clinical features. During the cluster headache, in addition to pain, the patient may experience symptoms on one side of the face, around the eye, the upper cheek, or temple. Now, something about cluster headache is it rarely switches sides. Now, migraine will do that. The word migraine comes from where it means half of head anyway. Now, some, some patients will have migraine. They'll say like 78% attacks are on the right side, every down there, it's on the left. Cluster headache in general doesn't do that. If it's going to be right-sided, it's always right-sided in general. These headaches come on episodically, usually on once a year, lasting six weeks, and chronically in 10% occurring daily. The headaches last 15 to 180 minutes, and unlike migraine, the patient has to lie down because they feel worse being, being up. Patients during cluster headache attacks have to get up and move around. Cluster headaches occur one to eight times a day, usually coming at night and locking into the clock also to occur at the same time every day. So I've had patients have attacks at two in the morning, two hours after they went to bed at 12, and then they'll have it the next morning at eight o'clock. That goes on every day. They may have one at 3 p.m., maybe three a day. They all come at that same time. So why do persons with cluster headache get up and move around? Well, Part of the reason must have to do with the very intense, horrible nature of the pain with cluster headaches. Cluster headaches are the most severe of the primary headache disorders with these headache attacks. The attacks are accompanied by restlessness, anxiety, and agitation. And unlike migraine, the pain is so intense, the individual does not want to lie down and cannot remain still. Dr. Blau, headache expert, writing in Lancet in the uh, uh, 1993 on behavior during a cluster headache stated, I quote, walking with the truck slightly bent forwards and clutching the head or sitting and rocking backwards and forwards with the hands pressed on or near the painful site was the most common behavior during attacks. God bless all you folks who have cluster headaches. This ends my talk for this today. Please click like and subscribe down there, and I'll see you again on the next talk.